Mr. President, great to see you. Thank you very really much. Really appreciate it. Thank you very it. much, Steve. Uh, so much going on. I want to start with your new immigration plan. Yes. Just tell us what you're aiming to achieve with that. Well, really, very simply, we have companies coming in here, as you know, by the dozens and by the hundreds and big ones, car companies. Uh, Honda's coming in with $14.5 billion. We mm -hmm. have a tremendous amount of uh, very, very top of the line. And they're coming back. We need people. We need people. And our unemployment now is down to 3.6, and I think it's going a lot lower. We're doing really well. I want to make sure that anybody that comes into our country comes in through merit. Mm -hmm. You know that very well. I watch your show all the time. And we want it coming in through merit. That's what we have to have. We can't do the other. It's just not possible. And what we want to do is uh, put up a very strong border. We'll have, by the end of next year, 450 to 500 miles built of the water wall, of the wall itself and the border wall. And it's imperative. You know, I read so much where the Democrats like to say, you don't need, we're going to have drones flying around. You have thousands of people. The drone doesn't do a thing. So the wall is being built as we speak. We'll have uh, close to 500 miles done by the end of next year, which is really something. And that'll have a big impact. And we're changing laws as rapidly as we can get them through the courts. But mm -hmm. you know better than anybody, we're fighting a court system. We're fighting the Democrats. The Democrats want open border. That means crime. And we have great crime statistics, but they'd be even better if we didn't have, right. you know, all of this coming in between the drugs and many of the wrong people, people that have records, people that have criminal records. So we're making very sure that those people don't get in. We're taking tremendous numbers of them out. And all of this is in a very con comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. And it'll go before Congress. It's going to have tremendous Republican support. I hope we can get enough Democrat support to get it passed. So you think this actually has a chance of happening? Well, I think there's tremendous pressure on many of the Democrats to get something passed, you know, in areas where I won by a lot and then somebody got in as a, you know, in the House, in particular in the House, so they control the House. But there's a lot of seats where they're, you know, very inclined toward me. And this time I'm running as opposed to just right. watching. Because a lot of people are saying um, that what they've heard about this plan is that it's designed really to get the Republicans all together. They don't really expect the Democrats to get behind it. No, we expect uh, that. Look, you can't say you expect anything. The one right. thing I will say, they have lousy policy. In many cases, they're lousy politicians. But you know what? They stick together. And you go throughout history, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, the Democrats stick together. And the Republicans don't stick the same way as the Democrats do. And I don't say that as a positive. I say that as a negative. The Democrats do stick together. So... If they decide, I guess leadership decides that they don't want to have it, then we're going to have a continuation. But we've gotten very tough on the border. We're letting, uh, you know, we have a catch and release where you catch and then you have to, by law, release. Or you have to take them to a court. Nobody has a court system. Who, what country has a court system where somebody walks into the country? Right. Other countries, they take so them So does out. this new plan have details in it that would change that? Tremendous details. Uh, it's got a very fair asylum system. The asylum system is a disaster right now. They read a statement handed to them by a lawyer, and then you're supposed to take them in. You know, a lawyer hands them a statement, and they read the statement. Right. They come in, and they say, we fear to be in our country. But then you see, they were the people online. They're carrying the flag of their country, whether it's Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. Mm -hmm. Uh, so so you got it's, the a, big, it's a big con, Steve, to be honest with you. It's a disgraceful thing. It could be fixed in 15 minutes if the Democrats would agree. And the big thing about it is the change in terms of people coming in, whether from wherever in the world, but right. for merit, that's the key point. The it's biggest, the biggest thing is you thing. come in through merit and you come in legally. Two things. You have to come in legally and you have to come in through merit. And one thing that people have speculated about was that it might include E-Verify. Is that going to be in the... So E-Verify uh, is going to be possibly a part of it. The one problem is E-Verify is so tough that in some cases, like farmers, they're not, they're not equipped for E-Verify. I mean, I say this against Republicans. A lot of the Republicans say you go through an E-Verify. I used it when I built the hotel down the road on Pennsylvania Avenue. I use a very strong E-Verify system. And we would go through 28 people, 29, 30 people before we found one that qualified. Right. So it's a very tough thing to ask a farmer to go through that. So in a certain way, I speak against myself, but you also have to have a world of some practicality. So when, when people hear that, some of the people, if you like, who are most 
Descri they're described as the restrictionists, the people who really right. want to kind of cut right. immigration to practically right. nothing. They hear that and they say, well, this plan was written by Jared Kushner and he's a globalist and it's all yeah. letting people in. What do you say to those? Many of them will be your supporters yeah, who are nervous about it. Yeah, Steve, this is not a globalist plan. I wanted this to be very, very strong. You know, we did uh, judicial reform. You saw mm -hmm. what we did there and a lot of people liked it, both conservative and yeah. liberal. That was a, probably the closest you could say to bipartisan. And because uh, a lot of it was unfair. And by the way, it's very tough. We have uh, Chuck Grassley in support of it. Uh, Mike Lee is in support of, you know, some of the strongest mm -hmm. conservatives. And at the same time, we have some people with uh, pretty liberal leanings. But this is really not, this is the least globalist. All it is is very simple. Strong border, mm -hmm. very strong border. And, you know, by that time, we'll have the wall built too. But strong border, and you have to come in if you're going to come in through merit so that all these companies that are moving into the United States can use the people where they can help, mm -hmm. as we say, make America great again, right? So that's what it's all about. Great. All right. Thank uh, you. Let's talk about China. Go ahead. Huge, huge issue. Um, I want to start with actually a small but really important part of it, the Go human ahead. part of it. Right. A lot of people watching, farmers are going to be very worried. Just tell us what you're proposing to do to help the farmers who may be hurt okay. in the short term? Good. Uh, first of all, I love the farmers. They voted for me. You look at the middle of this country, it's all red, meaning right. Republican, right? It's all, and it wasn't for other Republicans, but for me it was, and we have a great relationship. And even now, the farmers are saying, look, everybody knows that China's been ripping off the United States, along with almost every other country, in all fairness, and we're changing it pretty rapidly. You see what's happening. But the big one is China. We have a trade deficit with China of $500 billion. That's not even conceivable. And we've had it for years. And it goes up and it goes down, but it's from 200 to 500 and 600 billion dollars a year. Not million, billion dollars a year. And somebody had to do something about it. And we pretty much had a deal. It was a strong deal. And I told President Xi, who's somebody I like a lot, but he's for China and I'm for us, right? right. But I told him, I said, look, this can't be like a 50-50 deal. This has to be a deal. You're so far ahead from presidents that didn't that allowed you to get away. This can't be a 50-50 deal. Anyway, we had a very strong deal. We had a good deal. And at the end, they changed it. And I said, that's okay. We're going to tariff their products. And we put a 25% tariff on their products. Uh, we actually started it about nine months ago. And we've been collecting 25% on 50 billion of mostly technology. And then we have 200 billion that it was 10% and was supposed to go to 25, but because they were negotiating in what I thought was mm -hmm. good faith, I let it be 10% and I didn't, re well, two days ago I made it 25. So they're paying $250 billion at 25%. So we're taking in billions of dollars. Now, from China's standpoint, it's not good because all of these companies, many of these companies that are paying the tariff are moving to Vietnam and other places in Asia. I think, by the way, that's the point that's lost in all this. So people say, oh, well, it's not the Chinese government that's paying the, t the tariffs. And they say, well, you're not, you're not being straight about that. It hurts but, China so bad. Right. And, and especially that relocation of their supply chain. That's what they depend on. Well, the bigger relocation is that you're going to have a lot of American, even if I said for 25 percent or even for 10 percent, you're going to have a lot of American companies now come out mm -hmm. and and they're going to build plants and make this product in the United States which I like even right. better I mean you have to look they could buy from China in which case we take in tariffs that's okay it's not so bad but a lot of companies already you know they move very fast in Asia mm -hmm. and a lot of these companies that are in China are now moving to all right Asian countries where they don't have the tariffs so really you know we have very smart people in this country They'll be buying from different locations, but with the farmer, yes, because I love the farmer. We are going to be taking in possibly a hundred billion, possibly more than that in tariffs. We never took in ten cents from China. They took advantage of us for many, many years. We and I blame us. I don't blame them. I don't blame President Xi. Mm -hmm. I br blame all of our presidents, and not just President Obama. You go back a long way. You look at President Clinton, Bush, everybody. They allowed this to happen. They created a monster. We rebuilt China because they get so much money. So what I'm going to do is out of the hundred plus billion dollars, I said to my farm people, I said to Sonny Perdue, Department of Agriculture, mm -hmm. Secretary of Agriculture, Sonny, what's the most money that China has ever paid toward agriculture, toward buying food product? He said $15 billion a number of years ago. 
I said, is that the most? He said, yes. Some people say closer to 20, mm -hmm. but 15 billion was about the most. I said, good. I'm going to take $15 billion out of the right. $100 billion, and I'm going to give that to our farmers. Now, I don't have to give so all of it. You're going to buy their product no, that they're I, not well, selling. Well, I don't have to give all of it because uh, they're going to be able to sell at a much lower price. So mm -hmm. the difference between where they were and the lower price, so maybe if it's a $15 billion amount, they may end up getting six or seven or ten or whatever it is, but they'll be able to sell. So you're compensating. Well, I'll tell you an interesting story. I met with farmers about three weeks ago. First of all, they are unbelievable patriots. They said, sir, we don't want a subsidy. We just want a level playing field. And we also know that we're being killed by these countries, by many of the countries, not just China. China's just so much bigger than everybody else in terms of the dollars. But I said, what do you mean you don't want subsidy? You have to be kidding. Everybody that comes to see me, they all want a handout. Right. You're the only ones that don't want it. They don't want it. All they want is a level. They just want to make a living like they have. One man said, I'm, I've been on my farm, my family, for 150 years. We don't want subsidy. We never had subsidy. We never want it. We just want a level playing field because nobody can beat us with a level playing field. And that's what I'm doing. But what I'm doing now is I'm helping them along during this period of time at the highest level, because I said, I want to know what's the highest great. number. So I'm not taking them so to the low level. So the farmers are going to be in great shape, and it's going to start taking place very soon. I was going to ask that exact yeah, question. Very, when can they expect to see something? Well, we're now taking in okay. billions of dollars in tariffs that we never right. took in. And then the big thing with the tariffs is, do I do? We have $325 billion left over. Do I do that at 10% or 20 or 25%? That's tremendous amounts of money. So I just want to ask you, um, What's your end game on this on this trade dispute? Is it that you you want to sort of settle here? Would you be happy if it was just about the trade? How important is the technology theft, so, all of that stuff? A lot of people won't be happy with this answer, but I'm very happy now. We're taking in billions of dollars. Uh, China is obviously not doing well like us. You know, since I've been here, since I've been president, we've made almost ten trillion dollars in wealth, and China has lost ten trillion dollars in wealth. They've lost a tremendous amount. They've gone, you know, they've had a, mm -hmm. you see what's happening. Their economy is not great. Our economy has been fantastic. Because they were catching us. They were going to be bigger than us. If Hillary Clinton became president, China would have been a much bigger economy than us by the end of her term. And now it's not even going to be close. So what do you think of that analysis? A lot of people um, look at what China, the statements of Chinese leaders, they've written it down in speeches and so on. And they say, look, China's got a clear plan. They want to replace the U.S. as the superpower by in not going to happen. Time. Not going to happen with me. But do you do you believe that that's their intention? Yes, I do. I think that's their intention. Why wouldn't it be? I mean, they're very ambitious people. They're very smart. Uh, they're great people. It's a great. Yeah. It's a great culture. An amazing culture. You know, when I had President Xi, I was showing him the Lincoln bedroom and the White House, and I said, "This was built in 1799." You know, I think of yeah. that as being really old. But to him, that's like a modern house, China, because right. they have 3,000 and 4,000 year old places, right? Uh, but no, it's a great culture. It's an amazing culture with amazing people. And I like him a lot, but he's for China and I'm for us. So there's a little bit of a conflict. Let's move on to another hot spot, Iran, right. Middle East. Right. Tell, tell us what's, what your analysis is of what's going on right now. Well, look, Iran's been a problem for so many years. If you go back, just take a look at all of the conflict that they've caused. And the deal that President Obama made was a horror show, the Iran nuclear deal, because basically it says that in five years from now, they're going to have an open path to making nuclear weapons. We don't need another country with that. And frankly, especially them. We don't need it. So he made this terrible deal, paid $150 mm -hmm. billion dollars paid $1.8 in cash. That means cash, like, I mean, out of your pocket. Cash, green. Nobody's ever heard of a thing like that. I don't know if you've ever seen at a casino promotion a million dollars in $100 bills. It's a lot of area. What's a billion eight like? So he paid all of this money, made a terrible deal. We don't have good inspection rights. We're not even allowed to, we weren't even allowed to inspect some of the most important sites, like military mm -hmm. bases, certain things, where they would do it. Okay. The deal was terrible. When I first came to office, one of the first meetings I had was at the Pentagon with generals. And they were showing me the Middle East. And they had 14 or 15 sites where there was nothing but war, problems. Every single one of those sites 
was instigated by Iran. It was Iran military. It was people paid by Iran. It was just, you have no idea. It was just, I said, this is terrible. They were so strong. I ended the Iran nuclear deal. And actually, I must tell you, I had no idea it was going to be as strong as it was. It totally, the country is, is devastated from the standpoint of the economy. But now you see, the, the thing that I think a lot of people are worried about is that they heard what you said in 2016 and liked it when you said no more stupid wars. And then they hear these stories about troops and so I just on. don't want them to have nuclear weapons. And they can't be threatening us. And you know, with all of, uh, I just, I just want to with all of everything that's going on, and I'm not one that believes, you know, I'm not somebody that wants to go into war. Because war hurts economies, war kills people, most importantly, by far, most importantly. I think that if you look, when I went to North Korea, there were nuclear tests all the time, there were missiles going up all the time. We had a very rough time, then we got along. We'll see what happens right now. Right now, I don't think I told them when I left Vietnam right. where we had the summit. I said to I said to Chairman Kim, and I think very importantly, I said, look, you're not ready for a deal because he wanted to get rid of one or two sites, but he has five sites. I said, what about the other three sites? That's no good. We're going to make a deal. Let's make a real deal. But they haven't had any tests over the last two years. It's zero. There's a chart, and it shows 24 tests, 22 tests, 18 tests. Then I come, and once I'm there for a little while, you mm -hmm. know, we went through a pretty rough rhetorical period. Once I'm there for a little while, no test, no test, no test. So let's see what happens. So but, I, I but you cannot to... let Iran have nuclear weapons. I want to read you something Lindsey Graham said. Okay. Uh, your friend Lindsey Graham. Yes. Uh, he, he was in a magazine profile and he reported on a conversation he had with you and he said that you said to him, the trouble with you, Lindsey, is you want to invade everywhere except the places I want to invade. Well, so my question is, where does he want to invade? But more importantly, where do you want to invade? I want to invade, if I have to, economically. We've created a much stronger country economically than when I took it over. When I took it over, we were heading south. Our GDP would have been very negative. Regulations didn't allow you to do. You know, yesterday, as you probably saw, I was in Louisiana, opening up a $10 billion LNG plant that would have never been approved under another type of administration, never. And now you have 10,000 people working there, $10 billion yeah. they invested. Uh, we have tremendous power economically. If I can solve things economically, that's the way I want it. So you, re you can reassure people you're not looking for some kind of conflict in Iran. And well, I'm the one that talks about these wars that are 19 years and people are just there. And don't kid yourself, you do have a military industrial complex. They do like war. You know, in Syria with the caliphate, so I wipe out 100% of the caliphate. That yeah. doesn't mean you're not going to have these crazy people going around blowing up stores and blowing up things. These are seriously ill people. I don't want to say, oh, they're wiped out, you know, ISIS. But I wiped out 100% of the caliphate. I say, I want to bring our troops back home. The place went crazy. They want to keep, they, you have people here in Washington. They, want it. they never want to leave. I say, you know what I'll do? I'll leave a couple of hundred soldiers behind. But if it was up to them, they bring thousands of soldiers in. Someday people will explain it. Well, this but, is an but example. You do, have, you do have a group, and they call it the military industrial complex. They never want to leave. They always want to fight. No, I don't want to fight. But you do have situations like Iran. You can't let them have nuclear okay. weapons. You just can't let that happen. So that's an example, I think, of what people liked in 2016, where you didn't come over as I haven't a traditional changed. Republican. No, but right? I haven't changed. And that. Well, that take a look. Of, that's what we talk about on our show, the sure. popular. I just want to go I through gave a couple them, of... I gave the generals, I said, go ahead. you got one year. See what you can do in Afghanistan. So they fight and fight and fight. But, you know, we've taken it way down in Afghanistan. I don't know if you've seen that, Steve. We've taken it way down. Now, it's a rough place. It's a bad place. A lot of bad things happen. The World Trade Center bombers were sort of... That's like the Harvard University right. of terrorism, okay? If you want to be a terrorist, you go over there, okay? But, uh, no, we, I, I, I have not changed. The other day, great excitement, 
you've got Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, we're going to get together, do a big infrastructure plan. But very soon after that, you had Mick Mulvaney, your chief of staff, saying, no, it's not going to happen. Um, do you still want that big infrastructure yeah, um, plan? If, if Mick Mulvaney said that, then he has no right to say that. He tells me he didn't say that and he didn't mean it. He said it's going to be hard to finance. You know, we put $7 trillion into so the Middle East. you still want that big infrastructure? I do, but I also think we're being played by the Democrats a little bit. You know, I think what they want me to do is say, well, what we'll do is raise taxes or we'll do this uh -huh. or this or this. And then they'll have a news conference. See, Trump wants to raise taxes. So it's a little bit right. of a game. But I do believe they're doing that. Yeah, I'd like to have infrastructure. But I'd like to have it in the right terms. I'd like to have it, but I do want to have it. We have to fix our roads. We have to fix our bridges. Mm -hmm. I do like it, and it creates a lot of jobs. Another example, um, tax. Tax reform, right. the tax cuts. It's, it's we all agree great. it's been an amazing it's been great. boost to the economy and right. so on. There was one thing missing from it that you talked about that people noticed in 2016. Carrot interest. Yeah. You described that as I did. getting away with murder. Yeah, I hated How, it. Why wasn't it? But I traded bill? that for two points. In other words, I could have had carried interest out, but you would have paid 23 or 24 instead of 21, and I wanted the 21%. I used that as a negotiating chip, and frankly, it was a very good deal. So, so is carried interest something you'd still like to do? I would like to do it. I will do it, but every time I want to do it, they offer me things that are much right. more valuable than carried interest. It's not. It's not that much money. Right. I got a much better deal for it. Okay. But the answer is I'd like to do it. But every time I want to do it... I just think it's one of those examples where you really uh, confirm that idea that you're not the same old Republican. You're right. But, you know, I got much more money for it in the no, form a, of reductions. A, I, I get it. I and get I would have done it, but I actually traded it for a better deal. Another example, health care. You've got these senators working on a health care plan, Barroso, right. uh, Rick Scott, and so on. Um, in 2016, you said, we're going to take care of everyone. Right. People heard that to mean you're for universal coverage. Oh, no, no. Not, Is that not, what you mean by no, that? No, no. We have 180 million people right now with great private insurance. Uh, we have some great... I mean, you can't take it away. These people want to take it away. You have tremendous private coverage where they're mm -hmm. very happy. Uh, what I want to do is work at Obamacare is a disaster. I got rid of the individual mm -hmm. mandate, which was the worst part of Obamacare. Frankly, except for the one gentleman who decided after campaigning for eight years to repeal and replace, at 2 o'clock in the morning, he walked out on the floor and he went thumbs down. Yeah. We would have had health care repealed and replaced. But I'm doing it a different way. We got rid of the individual mandate as part of the tax cuts. That's most important, very important thing. We are now coming up with a much better plan than Obamacare. If we take the House back, keep the Senate, keep the presidency, they will have phenomenal health care at a fraction of the cost. And you're going to have a plan on that before the We're election. going to put out a plan pretty soon, actually. All right. Another one, drain the swamp. We talk about it all the time on our show. Right. Do you think you've done that? I think I have. And I think one of the things that's been incredible is this witch hunt that's gone on. And I think it's going on right now, the draining of the swamp, because you look at people, they're running scared. These were bad people. We had tremendously bad people. Mm -hmm. uh, the witch hunt was a hoax. It was, uh, and you know, I appreciate what you've said about it. Uh, I never made a call to Russia during the uh, right. Russia. If I went to Wisconsin or I went to Michigan, which I won and both of them, I didn't call Russia for help and everyone knew it. It was a con job, the whole thing. And it was started by some very bad people. Can I just and, ask you something? And on that's Russia part that of I, draining the swamp. I have. I, I'm just really intrigued by, which is that you get hit the whole time for you know you're being Putin's puppet and all the rest of it. Okay. Terrible. It's been reported this year that you personally authorized a cyber attack on Russia around the time of the midterms last year in order to stop them meddling in the midterm elections. Now that's strong action for is that true Did well you I, i'd rather that? not say that but you can believe that the whole thing happened and it happened during my administration but, but why the don't other you thing, talk about that because publicly. they don't like me to talk intelligence says please don't talk intelligence you know sometimes intelligence is good and sometimes uh, you look at comey then you look at Brennan and you look at Clapper, and right. I'm supposed to believe that intelligence? I never believe that intelligence. But you know, do you see what I'm saying? Though? When people say, oh, he's just Putin's puppet. You're popping. right. But, but in, take the, a, in terms of what you've done. Nobody's been tougher to Russia than me. Take a look at the pipeline, what I've done. Take a look at energy. Russia makes their money, mm -hmm. they live off energy. What I've done with energy in this country, we're now the number one in the world. That wouldn't have happened if Hillary got in or somebody else got in, probably even if another Republican got in. 
what we're doing. The plant that we approved yesterday, we got them approvals so fast. They've been trying for years to get it built, and we got approvals very quickly mm -hmm. for the big LNG, $10 billion, the big LNG plant. What we've done in terms of energy, what we've done in terms of the military, what we've done in terms of Ukraine with, you know, Obama used to give them pillows and, and blankets, right. and we gave them things that they can fight with. And I think Putin would be the first to say that he would have been much better off with Hillary Clinton as president than he is with Trump. We've been so, much, and by the way, by the fair, the unfake news media, by because there's so much fake, it is disgraceful what's gone on with the media. But they admit that Trump has probably been the toughest president ever with respect to Russia. On the swamp, there was one example of it that I just got so angry about, and we talked about it on the show and you saw it too. Uh, Obama's head of cybersecurity right. then becomes a lobbyist on cybersecurity for Huawei. Yeah. I mean, and that's all perfectly above board. He declared it. There's nothing you can do about it. Don't you think that should just not be allowed? That you shouldn't be allowed to lobby for a foreign government? Well, in that I would way? be all for that. I think it should be a lifetime ban. You know, some people say five years. We're putting in for five years. But, you know, it's very hard because. The same people that are working in government, they work in government and then they go and they take these unbelievable jobs. That happens with me too. They, you know, they're, they're part of your campaign. All of a sudden they're working with these big, and it's a very tough thing. You know, there's a very fine line, but I would love to see a five-year ban, but I'd actually like to see a lifetime ban. Look at Joe Biden. But it's the lobbying for foreign governments. You see, the foreign governments, they have ambassadors yeah. and embassies. Why did yeah. they need these lobbies? I, I think it's a disgrace. Look at Joe Biden. He calls them and says, don't you dare prosecute if you don't fire this prosecutor. The prosecutor was after his son. And he said, if you fire the prosecutor, you'll be okay. Yeah. And if you don't fire the prosecutor, we're not giving you $2 billion in loan guarantees or whatever he was supposed to give. Can you imagine if I did that? Well, and never mind that. Look at the, you know, we've reported it, uh, the, the relationship with China. A hundred percent. I mean, what's that? You know, I call him Joe China. If well, there's a don't reason, you think that should be investigated, well, that financial connection, the Chinese government putting billions of dollars into Biden family business? 100%. It's a, it's a disgrace. And then he says China is not a competitor of ours. China is a massive competitor of ours. They want to take over the world, okay? They have China 2020, you know, they have 2025, mm -hmm. right? China 25. That means that in six years now, I said to President Xi, that's very insulting because it's not going to happen. And it's very insulting to me. And you notice they don't use that anymore. They don't use it. It was very insulting to me because it's not going to happen, not with me. But with Biden, he says they're not a competitor. Then they take a lot of money from China. And I'll tell you what, if there's one reason outside of the normal reasons that the deal so far hasn't gone through, I think it will because they're getting killed with the tariffs. China's getting totally mm -hmm. killed. I told you, companies are leaving massive amounts of because of the tariffs. They're getting hurt badly. But if there's one reason that China and you understand what I'm going to say, didn't make that deal, it's because they're hoping that in 16 months, Donald Trump will be defeated by any one of those Democrats, and they'll go back to making $500 billion a year. And I understand that. I mean, I could really frankly understand, because it's not going to happen with me. What we're doing to China, I saw somebody this morning on one of the shows, actually, who I've never been a big fan said that this is the first time in 50 years that anybody from the West has ever taken on China. I'm interested in um, uh, a couple of the things that you said about 2020, some of the candidates. We've got the town hall with Pete Buttigieg. Um, Put edge, edge. There you go, uh, <laughs> this, this weekend. Just one thing on him, putting aside policy disagreements, don't you think it's just great to see the fact that you've got a guy there um, on the stage with his husband, and it's normal. It's not even. I think it's absolutely big deal. fine. I do. And, I but it's, it's a, isn't it a sign of great progress in the country that that's just? Yeah, I think it's great. I think that's uh, something that perhaps some people will have a problem with. I have no problem with it whatsoever. I think it's good. Uh, I think he runs a city that doesn't do perfectly, and uh, I think he's had. You know, it's sort of interesting because he's running for the president of the United States as a mayor, but you could say that. I ran for president of the United States and I was never in politics before, right? But I had a good life and I had a successful life and we're doing good. But no, I think it's, I think in one way it's terrific, absolutely. So looking to, to the election, um, obviously the economy 
very strong. No one can argue with that. But people say, well, the problem is um, the president won't be able to stick to that message. He's always going off on some other message, and he's not really going to focus on that. And that's what you got wrong in the midterms by not focusing on the economy. Do you accept that criticism? Well, I think the thing with the midterms was, number one, I wasn't running. And even though I said, pretend I'm running, but, you know, it's different when you're running. And I have tremendous poll numbers now. You see that. I mean, my poll numbers are great because the economy is so good. And I actually do talk a lot about the economy. I don't get credit for that. You know, but you can only say we have the greatest economy. I, if I stood in front of 25,000 people, because you would say nobody's ever in the history of politics gotten the crowds that we get, okay? That's one thing. And we have thousands outside. You know, we go f help people and have rallies and... I mean, we'll have we'll fill up stadiums, 25,000 people and 30, 40, 50,000 people standing outside. We put big screens. If I stood there and talked about the economy for that long a period, let's say the economy's great, unemployment's low, we're doing wonderful, we have the most number of people you ever just say it's boring work, to they, just talk they about start that. falling asleep. <laughs> One last question. Yes. You mentioned just now watching someone on the morning shows. And that's one of the things you get hit for a lot, about how you do the job. They say he's up in the residence all morning watching TV, rage tweeting at morning Joe. He's not focusing on yeah. the job. What's your response to that? So I have way over 100 million people on the various things, much more than that, but uh, over 100 million people between Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all of it, right? Uh, it's a tremendous way to communicate for me because I have so many people. When people do a book, they beg me, please give me, because it goes to be a, a best-selling book. Uh, if there's somebody interesting, I like to watch it. I watch much less television. You know, they like to make me look like I'm, I get, I'm up early in the morning. Yeah. I'm in the Oval Office early. I leave late. So it's not true when they say that you're up oh, in the residence. Only, no, no. They do that as a form of disparagement. I was about... Uh, three weeks ago with some very big businessmen yeah. and I was in the Oval Office negotiating and we have a small screen of television and they noticed that they were saying Donald Trump is up now he's steaming he's angry he's up in the residence I said see that folks I'm in the Oval Office right I'm a very calm person too you know I'm very, they like to make me like I'm raging I'm like the raging bull I'm a raging person the, the I'm tweets a are a bit raging every now and no, again but sometimes you do that for a reason I mean okay. you know the tweets seem to work and you know, it's no, I'm not knocking the tweets. I just no, but I have so many politicians. Could you possibly tweet a certain bill is going right, to be voted on? Right. I've destroyed bills that were going to be voted on that were bad, and I've gotten bills passed that were good by using Twitter. And Twitter is really a typewriter for me. It's really not Twitter. It's Twitter goes on television. They have breaking news. I'll tweet. I'll say, watch this. Boom. I did the Golan Heights to Israel, and I put it out on Twitter. If I put out a uh, news release. Nobody's even going to see it. Today, right. Huawei. Uh, I put it out on Twitter. People see. That's not to build Twitter. That's to say that as soon as it goes out, mm -hmm. it goes on television, it goes on Facebook, it goes all over the place, and it's instant. It really is, to me, it's a modern way But in of terms of how you use your time, that's really what I was getting at. They say, well, you know, he doesn't read his briefing books. He's, totally he's not right. He doesn't have these, you know, rigid 15-minute meetings. I'd just love to hear you talk about what is your approach to getting the job done? If it's not that traditional okay. thing, how do you see it? I read a lot. Uh, if I find somebody on television that I want to watch, I try and watch it because I feel you can learn a lot from a good interview with somebody mm -hmm. for 10 or 15 minutes. I really do. Uh, I will read briefings. I, they like to disparage. You know, they like to say, well, he doesn't read his briefing. Because I think I've done phenomenally, if you look at my policy outside of the United States, I think maybe in certain ways, maybe that's going to be the strongest. Right now, it's the economy. But I think maybe the strongest. Look, NATO is ripping us off. I got the NATO countries, we're defending them, to put up $100 billion more. And the Secretary of General of NATO, Stoltenberg, great guy, he's my biggest fan. Because NATO was going down like mm -hmm. this. It was going down, the funding. And now it go, went down. As soon as I got in, I raised $100 billion from NATO countries. Were they putting up? We're paying for it. We're paying for a large percentage. It's very unfair. We're treated unfairly throughout the world mm -hmm. because we've had people that didn't protect our country. I'm protecting our country. But they like to disparage. They'll say, oh, he's up in his room when I'm I in the office, or he's there. With I don't think anybody works, and it's not work to me, it's, I love doing it, so I'm yeah. not saying work, but I don't think anybody works the long hours that I work, I don't think anybody works as hard, but I don't consider it work because I love doing it. And you know why I love it, Steve? 
in this case. I used to love it. I used to love putting up buildings and doing what I did, but I or doing The Apprentice or whatever I was doing. But and if you don't love it, by the way, you can never do it well. You know that because you love what you do. But I like it in this case because I'm doing a lot for people. I'm doing a lot for people. If you look at taxes have gone down, so many different changes. Look at the jobs. Well, it's a specific example of that. I was just talking to uh, the health uh, HHS secretary, right. Azar. He literally said to me, you're just on his case the whole time about prescription drug I prices, the boning prices him down. on the detail. I think that's part of the story that people don't see. And we had the first year in 51 years where drug prices came down this year. First time in 51 years. No. We're doing a lot of good for people. I mean, look at jobs. Look at the economy. I mean, people are making more money than they ever have. We have more people working today than ever worked in the history of the United States. No, I love what I'm doing. There's another book coming out, Fire and Fury 2. I don't know what the title is. It's going to be all over again, all this kind of stuff. What do you make of that? Well, I never even did an interview. With these, I don't even know who the person is. I did an interview with that person. I mean, there are many books. Books come out every week. But I never even heard the book. You tell me now, I never did an interview with him other than years ago for a magazine, and he actually wrote a nice story about me. Uh, it's a big con job. It's really like the fake news. It's really terrible. I've had good books and bad books. But you tell me a book is coming out, they don't even interview me for the book. Nobody has done the job that we've done in the first two and a half years of a presidency. Nobody. Nobody's accomplished what we've accomplished. If you look at a list, so many different things, uh, even right to try, where a person's very sick and they have the right now to use medicines that may or may not work, that we do. So many different things that we've done. Yeah, well, this is one of the things uh, I love to show, talk about on my show because the detail of the policy just, you never get time for it. But you know what? I think your people are actually going to kill me if I don't stop. Don't now. worry about that. In terms that of that the, the time we've had, don't worry. I really appreciate it. It's a great the time. honor. It's I appreciate been... your show and I appreciate you and I watch it all the time and I really, really uh, I enjoyed the interview. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.